Hi everyone! Welcome back to Bible in a Year. My name is Natalie and we are on day 52 today. We're going to be reading out of Exodus chapter 2, Job chapter 25 and chapter 26, Luke chapter 23 verses 26 through 56, and then Psalm chapter 37 verses 27 through 40. I am so glad you're here today and I hope your day is going wonderfully. Let's get started with Exodus chapter 2. Hold on just one second here. All right, that's better. Let's go. A man of the house of Levi went and took a daughter of Levi as his wife. The woman conceived and bore a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. When she could no longer hide him, she took a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and with pitch. She put the child in it and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. His sister stood far off to see what would be done to him. Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe at the river. Her maidens walked along by the riverside. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant to get it. She opened it and saw the child, and behold, the baby cried. She had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, should I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. The young woman went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give your wages. The woman took the child and nursed it. The child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses and said, Because I drew him out of the water. In those days, when Moses had grown up, he went out to his brothers and saw their burdens. He saw an Egyptian striking a Hebrew, one of his brothers. He looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no one there, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. He went out the second day, and behold, two men of the Hebrews were fighting with each other. He said to him, Who did the wrong? Why do you strike your fellow? He said, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you plan to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Moses was afraid and said, Surely this, this thing is known. Now when, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and lived in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters. They came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. The shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. When they came to Reel, uh, their father, he said, How is it that you have returned so early today? They said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and moreover, he drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, Where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. Moses was content to dwell with the man. He gave Moses uh, Zipporah, his daughter. She bore a son, and he named him Gershom, for he said, I have lived as a foreigner in a foreign land. In the course of those many days, the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed because of the bondage that they cried, and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. 
God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the children of Israel, and God understood. Ooh, it gives me chills. God saw the children of Israel, and God understood. Okay, Job chapter 25 and 26. Have no fear. <laughs> chapter 25 is very small. Here we go. Job's friends. Then Bildad and, and then Bildad the Shuhite answered, "Dominion and fear are with him." He makes peace in his high places. Can his armies be counted? On whom does his light not arise? How then can man be just with God? Or how can he who is born of a woman be clean? Behold, even the moon has no brightness, and the stars are not pure in his sight. How much less man who is a worm, and the son of man who is a worm? Then Job answered, How have you helped him who is without power? How have you saved the arm that has no strength? How have you counseled him who has no wisdom and plentifully declared sound knowledge? To whom have you uttered words? Whose spirit came out of you? The departed spirits tremble. Those beneath the waters and all that live in them, Shul is naked before God. And Abdon has no covering. He stretches out the north over empty space and hangs the earth on nothing. He binds up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not burst under them. He encloses the face of his throne and spreads his cloud on it. He has described a boundary on the surface of the waters and to the confines of light and darkness. The pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his rebuke. He stirs up the sea with his power, and by his understanding he strikes through Rahab. By his spirit the heavens are garnished. His hand has pierced the swift ser serpent. Behold, these are but the outskirts of his ways. How small a whisper do we hear of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? <sighs> Sorry, I was still wanting to read on. Oh my goodness, the power of God. The power. We are so limited in our understanding with our human minds. All right, Luke chapter 23, verses 26 through 56. When they led him away, they grabbed one Simon of serene coming from the country and laid the cross on him to carry it after Jesus. A great multitude of the people followed him, including women who also mourned and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to tell the mountains, Fall on us, and tell the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things in the green tree, what will be done in the dry? There were also others, two criminals, led by him to be put to death. 
When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified him there with the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Dividing his garments among them, they cast lots. The people stood watching. The rulers with them also scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if this is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. An inscription was also written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. And it said, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged insulted him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answered and rebuking him said, Don't you even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. He said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. All the multitudes that came together to see this, when they saw the things that were done, returned home beating their breasts. All his acquaintances and the women who followed with him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Behold, there was a man named Joseph who was a member of the council, a good and righteous man. He had not consented to their counsel and deed. He was from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who was also waiting for God's kingdom. This man went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. He took it down and wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him into a tomb that was cut in stone, where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of the preparation and the Sabbath that was drawing near. The women who had come with him out of Galilee followed after and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. They returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. That is always so hard for me to read. And then it is also so overwhelming and then it is also brings me to such thankfulness when it says uh, we're going to go to verse 45 the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn in two the veil in the temple um, only the priests were allowed to go inside. That curtain was torn, signifying that everybody can come. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what life you've been born into, what caste you are, you are welcome to the feet of Jesus. There is no more curtain. He did this for you because he loves you. 
Okay, so moving into Psalm 37. <clears throat> it's overwhelming. Sorry, folks. 37, uh, 27 through 40. So this is by David. Depart, <clears throat> depart from evil and do good. Live securely forever. For Yahweh loves justice and doesn't forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and live in it forever. The mouth of the righteous talks of wisdom. His tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watch the righteous and seek to kill him. Yahweh will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait for Yahweh and keep his way and he will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power, spreading himself like a green tree in its native soil. But he passed away, and behold, he was not. Yes, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man and see the upright. For there is a future for the man of peace. As for trans, uh, transgressors, they shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off, but the salvation of the righteous is from Yahweh. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. Yahweh helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they have taken refuge in him. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, hold on to these words today. Remember everything that Jesus has done for you, for your loved ones, and even for the people that uh, we might not like so much, there's still time for them to be in that relationship with him. So uh, thank you for joining me, and I hope you guys have just the best day ever. I am really hopped up on ice cream. I think I ate half a carton of chocolate mint ice cream. I haven't had that in a while, so <laughs> I'm pretty hyper. And uh, I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my day. And we will see you tomorrow for day 53. Have a great day.